Today we'll be talking about your favorite watch season 4 and what are my thoughts on this season. So with that, let's just get into it. So the story for this season goes like this, where Nate sees a moving truck outside, and then go check on it, realizing that someone else is moving right next to them. So she, he goes back inside and sees that his parents are acting very, like, you know, stereotypical American eye. And then he sees the yokai who's in fairy gum, which is Kamenyan, an American cat yokai, which they easily compared to Jibanyan, saying that they're, he's the American version of Jibanyan. And then he tells him about the Yokai Watch dream. And what he says is that he apparently have to win him in a raffle. So they go to the Yokai world and they see a big wheel full of different prizes. And the biggest one is the Yokai Watch dream. So they decide to trade the Yokai medals for like playing tokens so then they could get their chances of winning the watch. Whisper is easily the unluckiest person in the group since he doesn't really have a yokai medal, so he just cuts up parts of his body and trades them in for just one singular token. Whisper gets really lucky and gets the first prize, thinking that it's the yokai watch dream. But no, turns out the fifth prize is actually the yokai watch dream, and everyone sees every single yokai getting what they want. It you know, Whisper pretty much just runs out of body parts to get rid of. He's eventually stuck with a bunch of prizes he doesn't even want, so he slowly starts just trading random stuff he got until he almost traded the Yokai Watch Dream for something a lot worse, and then he realizes he actually got what he wanted. So they went home and discovered the Yokai Watch's dream gimmick, which is the Dream Roulette. So he uses Tamanyan's medal and turns out Tamanyan got lucky during the roulette. As for Jibanyan, he didn't really get that lucky during the roulette. And by the end of the episode, we're pretty much hinted about the Yoko Watch Dream being able to use different, you know, gimmick items. And eight things that one of his abilities is to prevent peanuts from getting stuck. A major character this season, it's Jerry. He's supposed to represent the uh, stereotypical American, you know, being fat and being, you know, not the best with intelligence. For example, no matter how many times Nate shows him how to use the watch, he thinks the only way the watch works is he put it upside down, and if it says that's not it, then that's what he thinks is the entire point of the watch. Just to say that one line. And he forces any yokai he meet to give him their medal no matter what. And honestly, I don't really know what to think of Jerry. I mean, he's just annoying. and But that's what makes him funny. And how annoying he is. So this season has a lot of side segments. So I'm going to be talking about two notable ones for this season. First of all, we have the Buster's Treasure Arc, which is supposed to be about Kompasan, Jibanyan, and Indy Jaws, with more members slowly coming into the show. It's basically trying to find a rare treasure so then they could turn Indy Jaws' sister back into a yokai. Then we have the last Nyamurai, which is supposed to be about Tamiyan, teaching this yokai about the whole culture of Japan even though he is an American and knows nothing about Japan and its culture. And the running joke for this side segment is that at the end, when this yoga finds out Hitamanyo has been telling him the wrong things, he thinks that he's a failure and almost pulls a sword through its body. My overall thoughts on this season is actually pretty nice. Like, I don't think it's better than Yoko Watch Season 3, but in terms of quality, it definitely brings something new to the table. And 
Plus, for this being the final season they ever got in Japan, I really appreciate it. But with that, I'll see you guys next time.